Tonight on EKB Evening News at 6, Appalachian Air is flying into the sunset. Good evening, I'm Cindy Mae Johnson. Appalachian Air's local service in Pikeville will soon be grounded. Corporate flight management and public charters announced today that the airline based out of the Pikeville Pike County Regional Airport will end service next month. The airline service began last October, linking Pikeville and Nashville. Consultant Luke B. Schmidt worked with Pikeville to recruit and implement the airline. He says that despite nearly 100% airline reliability and what he calls aggressive pricing, the service failed to take off in popularity. He blames the economy. The overriding issue, uh, is, as we've seen in the press release, is the, uh, is the economy in uh, the Pikeville area and the loss of the 12,000 mining jobs over the last couple of years, which unfortunately has had a ripple effect up and down the line in the economy. And um, as we launched the service last October, obviously that situation was in play, but um, there was nothing we could do about it because that's when we had to do it at the launch. Um, and so we, we did everything we could have possibly done to build ridership. We had a good marketing campaign. Uh, the city, or the chamber, the airport board, everybody got behind the service and, and pushed it as hard as they could. And the service providers provided a great product. Everybody would use it, like it. But unfortunately, we just could not get enough people on the airplanes uh, to get to the right human point. Schmidt also addressed one of the more common criticism the airline received, the inability for passengers to check their luggage through to the next destination from Pikeville. We did everything humanly possible to try to fix it. Uh, we, got, we actually started working with TSA in uh, 2013. Uh, we, we did every single thing they asked us to do to uh, prepare the uh, airport for, screen, for screening. And then uh, they, the TSA people said that they would not do the screening and type told that they were uh, willing to look at some alternatives, but to be perfectly honest, we just couldn't get them to do it. Airline officials have not yet determined the final date of air service. Passengers who have booked trips after the last scheduled flight will be contacted directly by public charters. Officials with the Kentucky Division of Water were in Pike County today testing the Levisa Fork of the Big Sandy River in the wake of the Grundy sewage spill. What they've learned is that sewage is continuing to seep into the river. At least it's uh, a rate that has been cut in half. EKB News reporter Shannon Deskins has details. Officials with the Kentucky Division of Water spent today in Pike County taking water samples on and around Fish Trap Lake. Since Kentucky was notified on May 13th by Virginia that millions of gallons of raw sewage were pouring into the Levisa Fork of the Big Sandy River, Kentucky officials have been on alert. Joshua George spent this morning taking samples in the Mouth Card community and the surrounding area just a few miles downstream from that spill. We're collecting some samples from the Levisa Fork and as well as some of our uh, counterparts from Frankfurt are up today. They're sampling in Fish Trap Lake and below Fish Trap Lake uh, to make sure that uh, uh, we're not seeing any impact to water quality from uh, the potential sewer overflow in uh, Conway Wastewater Treatment Plant in Virginia. Crews in Buchanan County, Virginia have been working since March to unclog the 20-inch diameter sewage line packed with rock and debris for hundreds of feet. George told us today that the tests for E. coli and other potential health risks could take a couple of days to get back, but he says the results from other tests that they could read on site weren't that bad. The only results we saw today were uh, pH and dissolved oxygen, and uh, both those measurements that we took in Levisa Fork were within normal range. Officials speculate 1.5 million gallons of raw sewage per day had been flowing into the river from March until recently, when reports out of Virginia say that amount has now been reduced by as much as half. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shannon Deskins. A hardy man had to be arrested twice Monday after allegedly slipping away from police the first time. 
32-year-old William Greg Queen was arrested shortly before 10 o'clock last night on an indictment for robbery and assault, as well as two outstanding traffic violations. When the arresting officer arrived with him at the Pike County Detention Center, he left Queen in the police cruiser while he went inside to get the warrants. When the officer returned, Queen had disappeared. He was found about 15 minutes later on Main Street. Queen allegedly told the officer he wasn't going to jail, then complied once the officer produced a taser. Queen now faces additional charges of fleeing police and resisting arrest. Pike County Jailer Freddie Lewis has been on the job for about six months. Now he's making some changes at the jail based on his experience. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele sat down with Lewis to find out what those changes will be. As a requirement by the Pike County Fiscal Court, the Pike County Detention Center must update its policies and procedures and explain any changes each year. This year, the detention center has amended five policies and adopted a new canine unit policy. Pike County Jailer Freddie Lewis says it's important to update policies to protect the detention center and its employees. Basically what you want policies in place for, uh, you know, is for training, education of your employees, training education of the inmates, and also it's protection. One change at the detention center is a random employee drug test. Lewis thinks this is something needed to make sure inmates don't come in contact with drugs. We've had staff meetings and all of them signed off on it. Uh, we've educated them, trained them to the drug policy. Naturally, we have zero tolerance here. And at any given time, we can pull someone out uh, just randomly and do a drug test. We don't have to get no, you know, approval. Other changes at the detention center include a daily staff search, an officer on every floor of the jail, signing off on the release of inmate property, and no discussion of the jail or inmates on social media. Any talk about the jail, the Pike County Detention Center, any talk about inmates, uh, you know, from an employee on social media, we, that's definitely zero tolerance. We will not allow that. You know, I don't want some family member out there that has a son in here or a daughter in here. It's already hard enough on them as it is, and uh, they don't need to uh, worry about, you know, one of our employees getting on Facebook saying what their son or what their daughter or what their dad or what their mom's doing at the jail. That's none of their business. A canine unit policy had to be adopted by the jail because it's something new that is offered at the detention center. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shelby Steele. Former University of Pikeville President Dr. James Hurley has, has been hired as Dean of the School of Business at Lincoln Memorial University in Harrogate, Tennessee. LMU President James Dawson made the announcement yesterday and cited Hurley's success in generating growth and fundraising at UPike, as well as his record for global outreach as reasons why he was selected. In a statement, Hurley said he was honored to be picked for the post and that he and his family look forward to being part of the LMU family. Hurley abruptly resigned as UPike president in April after taking the post in 2013. He had previously served in other roles at the school since 2009. The owner of Letcher County Mine Supplier won't have to serve any time in prison after pleading guilty last year to conspiring to defraud the federal government. ANA Supplies owner Avery Miles of Premium pleaded guilty in October to evading federal record-keeping requirements by writing checks to third parties, then keeping the money minus a $200 fee after the checks were cashed. The checks totaled $120,000 over the course of a year and were written in amounts under $10,000. Miles was sentenced Thursday in Abingdon to two years probation. Coming up, an area businessman is this year's winner of a statewide education award, and the City of Pikeville and UPike have partnered on the college's new optometry school. We'll be back with details in two minutes. As the University of Pikeville continues to build its new optometry school, the City of Pikeville is stepping in to lend a hand in pursuit of funding. EKB News reporter Courtney Lovern has the story. As the University of Pikeville progresses with the construction of its optometry school, measures have been taken by the Pikeville City Commission to ensure that the university stays on course. 
Monday night, City Attorney Russell Davis suggested passing a resolution to start the bonding process for the project. The city will act as a conduit, allowing the school to qualify for USDA funds without placing debt or liability on the city. This isn't the first time the city has assisted the community in this way, though. Uh, there's a lot of work going on down there right now. We're really excited about it. We've got a great partnership, not only with the university, but the city did the same thing for the Cole Building, which is a medical school there, and then we also did the same thing for the, uh, uh, the local hospital, Pikeville Medical Center, for them to be able to bond to get those funds to USDA. Um, so it's a great mechanism for the city to act um, in a way to be able to help get the funding, assuming no liability for the funds, but to bring in another uh, great uh, facility into the community. With the action, New Pike can now move forward with securing funds for the actual construction. Meanwhile, the city benefits through the new jobs the school will bring, as well as the tax revenue those jobs will produce. Uh, my understanding is, is that this uh, new facility will, will uh, generate about 240 new students, uh, 120 new staff members. Uh, be a great uh, addition to the landscape of downtown right where a lot of the other buildings are going around the boulevard. So if you look at the new, two new hotels, the new coal building, uh, the new distillery that's getting ready to come along, the new coffee shop, uh, the addition of this building will really, again, enhance that area along with providing a valuable service, uh, not only for the students in the university, but also for this region. Reporting for EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Courtney Levering. Paintsville businessman Bob Hutchison has been selected as this year's recipient of the Joseph W. Kelly Award given by the Kentucky Board of Education. The award is presented to a business leader who promotes school improvement and equal education. With his brother, Tom, Hutchison owns 14 McDonald's restaurants throughout eastern Kentucky. He's also chairman of the Johnson County School Board. Over the years, Hutchison has donated more than $1 million to area schools. He was nominated for the award by Johnson County Schools Innovation Coordinator, Noel Crum. Coming up, Joe Kinzer's got your sports report and a story on a special awards ceremony. But first, DKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will be in with a look at our forecast. Stay with us, we'll be back in two minutes. been another gorgeous day at least here in Pikeville has that been throughout the region throughout the region things nice and calm today temperatures fairly comfortable and where they should be this time of the year in the low 80s hopefully you had a chance to enjoy it things are about to heat up Doppler radar showing one little lone thunderstorm in uh, parts of Breathitt County also over toward Wolf County other than that nice and calm across the region satellite and radar composites showing we do have a very weak front right across Kentucky now. You can see a couple of those little dots there of the uh, radar showing where the showers are falling and that is currently in central and western parts of Kentucky. Other than that, nice and calm across the Ohio Valley. Now temperatures, that's going to be the key thing here over the next few days. 81 the current temperature in Pikeville, 81 in Inez, 81 in Prestonsburg, 81 in Sayersville. It's a popular number. We have 80 in Whitesburg, 75 a little cooler higher up uh, there in Dorton. Williamson at 85 degrees, 83 right now in Logan. But when we broaden the picture and show you temperatures across the entire U.S., notice all the 90s stretching from parts of Missouri all the way through the Midwest. We're talking all the way up toward Minnesota, North and South Dakota, down to Texas. This is all the purple is temperatures in the 90s. And when you see some of the white showing up, it's temperatures at least hitting the triple digits and some of that heat will continue to make its way to the east and yes that will involve all of our region from eastern Kentucky, western West Virginia and southwest Virginia as well. We could be talking about near record highs as a matter of fact. Wednesday for tomorrow forecasting a high of 89. The record is 89 so we will probably tie that record. Thursday we're going for 92 degrees. The old record right now 90. That was set back in 1984. And on Friday, 90 is the forecast high. Looks like the record is 91. Be kind of close. I don't think we'll hit the record on Friday. So the best chance, tying the record on Wednesday and probably beating that record as we head into the day on Thursday. On top of that, we're going to have to talk about the Muggy Meter. Yes, it is back for the first time this season, ladies and gentlemen. The dew points topping in the mid-60s. That means it will be noticeable. The humidity will be increasing and will be borderline uncomfortable 
as we head into the next couple of days. So with that being said, if you have to work out in the heat, take it easy. Drink plenty, plenty, plenty of water. And of course, if you don't have to be out for a lot of hours, it's just recommended that you just stay indoors. Check on the elderly, check on the pets and all that good stuff. The uh, Pollen Count sponsored by Faith Pharmacy, Adams Plaza in Pikeville. 6.0 on Wednesday, 7.7 .7 on Thursday, 7.2 on Friday. Seven day forecast, 89 degrees tomorrow, 92. Very hazy, hot and humid on Thursday, 90 on Friday. Showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon and evening. That will be Friday all the way through the early part of next week. So this is really the first time we've had a streak of temperatures in the upper 80s to near 90 degrees. And this, it cost you season, to bring out the muggy the meter? The muggy meter is back. And you have words on it like oppressive? Yeah. Well, Some of us like was, hot weather. Oh, but when that humidity gets just, you can't hardly breathe when you go outside or what we call it, air you can wear. Yes. As soon as you walk out, you just feel like you got the humidity all over you. Put some beads on, pretend that you're in New Orleans. Mm, a little tropical drink. Yeah. I like where you're going with this. It'll work. I like this. <laughs> Thanks, Lathan. <laughs> a new Veterans Memorial is coming to Pikeville. During a work session yesterday evening, the Pikeville City Commission discussed progress on a Veterans Wall Monument located near the Cedar Creek Fire Station. The wall has been in the works for about a year since a local veterans group came to the commission with the idea. It's very unique because it will not only um, uh, display each branch of the military and give uh, homage to those that have sacrificed so that we can have the quality of life that we have today, but it's also a gathering place uh, for veterans to come. There'll be a little picnic area and behind it they'll be able to come and reflect and maybe meet some friends. Um, it's going to be really, really nice because the intent is is that there'll be a seal uh, on the wall for each branch of military, and then in the middle of it will be an eternal flame. Um, so there'll be um, each military uh, or each branch their flag flying behind the seal, and then uh, with the flame adds a little added nuance to it, and and that'll be really nice. The monument is expected to be completed and open to the public appropriately around the fourth of July. We'll be back in just two minutes. Joe Kinzer joins us now for sports. You know, Joe, you've done Sports Guys for a long time, but last night was your first real, you know, television sports cast. How does it feel? Well, you got loosened up a little bit, a little bit different on the TV side, but a special night, Cindy, last night at the Expo Center. Good evening, everyone, and let's take a look at sports. Yesterday evening, the annual Pike County Schools Athletic Hall of Fame ceremony took place and they were individual and team awards handed out to Pike County teams for the 2015 inducted class. The individuals inducted include Hall of Famers, Cole Bentley, Austin Hatfield, and Drew Mullins from Belfry. And the team inductions go to the Johns Creek cheerleading team for their outstanding accomplishments, including a national championship. And you take a look at them right there. Next up, the Belfry Pirates Middle School Football Championship team, coached by Danny Oliver, my nephew, you start on that one. And Philip Haywood's Belfry High School State Football Championship on the high school level, the Class 3A state champions. The Cincinnati Reds were looking to extend their win streak up to two last night as they host the Philadelphia Phillies. Let's pick up the highlights, bottom one. Reds down by one, Todd Frazier lines a base hit in the left field. Brandon Phillips trucking around third, and the game is tied at one. Bottom second, here's a weird play coming up. Billy Hamilton standing on third. Brandon Phillips will walk. Why does the catcher throw the ball down to first base? You don't have to. Hamilton heads up play. He'll score, and the Reds are up 2-1. Bottom three, Zach Kozart sends this one into left field, and Lil Leaguers, that's a no-no. You don't come in on the ball. That's a misplay there by the left fielder. And look at Todd Frazier like Gary Sloan type speed. Rounding third, and he scores, and the Reds are up 3-1. Bottom six, we're tied at three, and rookie Ivan Jesus Jr., his Major League Baseball debut, two-run shot, Reds up 5-3, to three, and that is Zach Cozart in the eighth inning, getting into the home run parade as the Reds win it 6-4. The Cincinnati Reds will be back in action tonight. Anthony Desclafani will be on the mound as the Red Legs will try to make it three in a row. Coverage on Hit City USA begins at 640. 
The 50th annual Major League Baseball Draft began Monday, and Cincinnati selected high school catcher Tyler Stevenson out of Georgia as the 11th pick in the first round. The right-handed batter hit 415 with eight home runs and 25 RBIs this past season. With the next two picks, the Reds selected two right-handed power pitchers. Antonio Satillion, there he is right there throwing, a high school player out of Texas, and Tanner Rainey, a reliever from University of West Alabama. The 22-year-old had a 4-1 record with nine saves and 25 appearances this past season. While mentioning the MLB draft, Minnesota Twins used the 73rd pick of the draft to select Kyle Cody from the University of Kentucky. The right-handed pitcher went 4-4 four four with a 491 earn run average for the cast this past season. Scouting reports indicate that he has an upper 90s fastball with a good slider. Changes are being made for the 2015-2016 basketball season as coaches are being announced. Alan Hatcher was named yesterday as the head coach of the Logan Wildcats basketball program. Hatcher has compiled 771 wins in his coaching career. Here are a few comments from the new mentor of the Logan Wildcats. I'm excited about the, the opportunity. You know, Logan is a historic uh, basketball tradition program from probably as good as any in West Virginia. You know, if you've got talent that runs up and down and you've got athletic ability, you want as many possessions as you can. Logan has won 1,649 ball games in school history, seven state titles. There's Edwin May. He was recently named the news boys basketball coach of the Tug Valley Panthers. May inherits a ton of talent as the Panthers have six of their top nine players back from one season ago. Prestonsburg High School senior Dalton Frazier quickly accepted an offer to Austin P. State University to play football this upcoming season. He spent this past weekend at the Governor's Camp and thoroughly enjoyed the program. The 6'3", 235-pounder rushed for 1,614 yards and 20 touchdowns this past season for Coach John DeRoss's Black Cats of Prestonsburg High School. Game three of the NBA Finals takes place tonight and the series shifts to Cleveland as the Cavaliers and the Golden State Warriors are tied at one game apiece. Now, do you follow the NBA? A little bit. You know, I'm a closet NBA fan as it comes, you know, to the, uh, to the best seven championship series. And Cindy, Cindy, we have breaking news out of Louisville. What's that? As the Louisville Cardinals has extended the contract of head coach Rick Bettina through the 2026 season. Breaking news just happening right now. Breaking news, but not real surprising news. No, he'll be 73 years old when the contract expires. Good point. Thanks so much, Joe. We'll be back in just two minutes. Well, again, you brought the muggy meter out. I guess people <laughs> need to not know. Good. Not good. That means the hazy, hot, and humid weather will be making a return. First time this season. 89 degrees for tomorrow, 92 on Thursday, 90 on Friday. Then the chance of showers and storms returning as we head into the weekend. Just the pop-up showers that we see during the afternoon and evening. Well, I know you're concerned about Saturday's forecast. Lathan, you got to get rid of the muggy meter by Saturday morning, pal. The 15th annual Hatfield McCoy Full Half Marathon, 1,200 runners from wow. around, from three different countries and 45 one. different states. 1,201. You're the only one. And I'm the, and I'm the <laughs> sucker for East Kentucky Broadcasting. I've never gone 26.2 miles, folks, so Friday might be my last sports cast. I don't no, know. No. You'll knows? be fine. <laughs> you work on that weather. I will. Don't forget to stay with us tonight at 7 for Mel's Video Rewind. That's going to do it for tonight's EKB Evening News. You know you can get more local news anytime by listening to the radio stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. You can follow EKB News and EKB TV on Facebook and Twitter. Good night, all. Thanks for watching.